So what I have here is an older cell phone that's been replaced. The phone itself is in reasonably decent shape and the battery is not so bad. And um, I got some old headphone here that is long past good. But what I want off the headphones is this cord with this four part plug here. Uh, and we're going to make a two channel function generator that works in the audio frequency range and uh, test that out and see if it's worthwhile. What sort of performance we can get out of a phone here with some software downloaded uh, from the Play Store. So I've cut the cable off the headphones. I might have a meter here, three feet. Um, I did not need all of that cable that was on the headphones. It would just be uh, kind of a nuisance. But I thought I might show you a little trick when you get to this really small fine wire that these are made with. That's to give it plenty of flex. Uh, it's very difficult to strip the ends here, so the much easier way is to put a blob of solder on the end of your soldering iron here, and then just go over the tip a few times, just go back and forth a little bit and melt the insulation backwards. It will often just suck back a little bit, and it'll put, uh, hopefully it'll put some solder on the tip here. If not, you might need a bit of flux. But a lot of times this wire is already uh, tinned because the people at the factory have to deal with this stuff when they're building it. So they pre-tin the wire and it takes the solder very nicely. And that gives you some little areas on the end here to, to, to work with and to uh, use your probes and your, your testers and so that you can touch something and get a beep off of your ohm meter if your ohm meter has that beep function. It's way easier to... To do it that way so don't even bother trying to strip these these are logitech ones i'm sure other manufacturers have different uh, ways of doing things but when it's really tiny like this first thing to do is see if the soldering iron will melt the insulation back to expose the wire that's underneath so here's what i've ended up with uh, my four wires that come out of here that i need there's five in here but there's a uh, ground wire a drain here whatever that uh, doesn't appear to be necessary um, and the plug here, this is the way this has ended up for the colors of the cable. And then my particular headphones, yours might be different if you decide to do this. I'm going to attach this onto the little board here, this little, this little piece of cutoff board. Use some uh, zap straps here to put that guy on. Solder these ends onto that board. And I've got this little uh, header pin right here so that I can stick this at any time into this um, a breadboard piece here. And then uh, it's just a unit ready to go if I should decide that I want to use that uh, cell phone function for generating some tones or whatever. One real nice thing to remember about having something like a tone generator off of a cell phone is that it's totally isolated. There's no uh, ground connection or anything like you might have on the um, outside of a BNC plug on the ground part of a BNC. You're, you're hooking yourself to ground with... Uh, say a cell phone or something like that, it is totally isolated. There's no ground loops or anything you have to worry about. So I'll throw all this stuff together and solder it up and we'll uh, check out what the phone actually puts out. So I said I would show it to you working on this phone. And here we are with the software installed. And uh, the output's turned off right now. If I turn the output on, there's one kilohertz. And I can go and change the frequency just by pushing the odd button here. There's two kilohertz. And uh, what I'm going to do though is, because this is so small on the phone here, I'll turn that off. I'm going to, uh, I, got a, I got a pad here that'll, it's much larger. And I'll, I'll set that up and we'll have a look on the scope as well as the pad so you can get a better idea of what's going on with all the buttons here and all the features of this. Okay, so we have the pad hooked up here. Um, you can see the output here. There's our 440 hertz. Other side is set for 600. Bring that down there. So the left here can be channel 1 or channel 2. There's channel 1, channel 2. I'm not going to bother doing the right. It's the same thing. It does exactly the same thing when all of them. It's just another output. Turn that off for a sec. And we've got a frequency sweep here. So let's go look at our start. Uh, the start's 400 hertz. Stops 5 kilohertz. Takes 5 seconds to do it. Um, we've got a mode that we can set it in. We can go all the way up, which is bounce here, all the way up to 5 kilohertz and then back down to 400. Or we can just simply do it as a repeat. Starts at 400, goes to 5k, and then immediately, immediately back down to 4k, 400 hertz, and then back up again. Let's try that. Oh, it's on the channel 1. So that's channel 1 set for that. So 
So it works great. I mean, uh, you can't complain. It's just an app on the phone, or in this case, a pad here. Um, let's go and have a look at uh, our our output on channel one. Let's we'll say channel two. We're going to go over here and we can turn it on to triangle waves. We got to go channel two, turn it into a triangle wave. And there we are up on the scope here. There's our, there's our triangle wave. Now uh, the uh, square wave has some troubles. Uh, it, it needs help. So you definitely want to pass that through a Schmidt trigger or something like that. It's uh, also this is cranked way up so I can get lots of voltage on the display there too. So that's another reason why that's doing that. But nonetheless, given what this thing does, it's uh, it's it's great. I mean, you can modulate it one channel with the other. So uh, there's lots of functions in here, and uh, not not a bad not a bad deal. And by the way, uh, this is the uh, Coolsoft K E U W L S O F T. I'm not recommending it per se. I've, it's the only one I've ever actually used, and there's uh, there's quite a number of them out there. It's just one that I stumbled across, and uh, these guys also make a spectrum analyzer as well that does like that. I've never used it, but um, yeah, it's just in the Play Store, so that's one way to do things. Download it and make yourself a little. Uh, connector or whatever and by the way there is another other way to hook this up you could use this connector here it's got the, uh, the the plugs and the RCA connectors you know if you want to throw some test tones into a stereo system or something uh, just be careful this thing actually does put out a couple of volts and one more thing too is this um, the output is, is biased DC biased it's almost three volts on here so you, when you're looking at it on the scope there that's uh, that's AC coupled so you'd want to put a capacitor in here. And uh, other than that, it's uh, works great.